Hello and good evening students and welcome back to Global Online Platform. This is Chandni Swarnikar and today we are going to talk about some most important previous year questions and this is our fourth lecture on this series, full revision series. You can get my lectures at 9 p.m. on a daily basis. But before I tell you in the video, I will tell you that in the December exam, you will have to do smart progression for the GIRF. That's why Global Online is taking you for the English Literature Complete Course. जिसमें आपको वीडियो लेक्चर्स मिलेंगे जिसमें शॉर्ट एंड स्मार्ट के साथ आपके सारे कॉन्सेप्ट क्लियर हो जाएंगे इसके साथ ही आपको फुल नोट्स पीडीएफ डी फॉर्मैट में अवेल कराया जाएगा जिसे आप अपने मोबाइल लैपटॉप में डाउनलोड करके पढ़ सकते हो इसके साथ ही आपको मॉक टेस्ट भी मिलेंगे जिसे एज इट इज क्वेश्चन एग्जाम में पूछे जाते हैं मॉक टेस्ट आपके फाइनल प्रोफेशन में बहुत हेल्प करता है तो गिवन कॉन्टैक्ट नंबर पर कॉन्टैक्ट करके आप इसे ज्वाइन कर सकते हो और सबसे अच्छी बात इस कोर्स की है दर यू गोइंग टू गेट कम्प्लीट पेपर वन कोर्स फॉर फ्री तो ये सेविंग थर्टी है ओके Now, for free videos, you can download all the courses from the global online. You will get all the knowledge from the courses from here. Go to the search bar and write the name of the course. You will get the overview of the course. You will get the duration and fees. Click on the content section and you will get all the folders available unit-wise. In every unit, you will get all the courses. Curry lectures, evaluation, notes, mock tests and MCQs you will get. Besides, you don't need to learn anything. If you join the Global Online Paid Course, you will also add in the WhatsApp group where you will provide the PDF with each session with each session. Now moving on to our first question that is question number 85. So, what game do the characters play in Act 2 of Herald Pinter's The Birthday Party? Okay? The question is asking about a game and which uh, is a game that is Rolf Pinter's uh, work, hai, the birthday party. In Act 2, mein characters play in okay? So the options are a game of chess, a game of cards, blind man's buff or musical chairs. These are the options you ha have to find the correct one. Okay, before that, before um, finding out the correct answer let me tell you something about the birthday party basically it was published in 1959 that you must remember then it's a full length play okay full length play hai. and the characters are some of the characters are very important you must note it down for example Pite is there then Meg then Stanley then uh, Lulu it's a very funny name, but uh, yeah. Then Goldberg. And the last one is McCann. Okay, this is the spelling. M-C, capital C-A-N-N. Okay, double N. Now, the correct answer is blind man's buff. What they play? What kind of they, uh, game they play? The name of the game is blind man's buff. The third one is the correct answer, okay? Now moving on, which one among the following is a set of these metaphysical poets? Which one among the following is a set of the metaphysical poets? You have to answer that. Okay, so metaphysical poets, what do you understand? The first thing you need to focus on is that it was coined by Samuel Johnson. Okay, it was coined by whom? It was coined by Samuel Johnson. It was coined by whom? It was coined by Samuel Johnson. And metaphysical poets are very famous because of the use of conceits. So they use conceits because of that they are identified differently. Okay, and yes. वेदा फिजिकल पोइट्स जो है जो टर्म है सैमुअल जॉनसन ने क्वाइन किया है बट किस वर्क में किया है द वर्क्स नेम इज लाइफ्स ऑफ द मोस्ट एमिनेंट इंग्लिश पोइट्स द लाइफ्स ऑफ द मोस्ट एमिनेंट इंग्लिश पोइट उसमें एक चैप्टर है अब्राहम कॉले दैट इज चैप्टर ऑन अब्राहम कॉले देयर ही क्वाइन द टर्म ओके ना एक्सेप्ट दिस राइटर्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल जॉन डन इज देयर हेनरी वॉगिम Consider as a metaphysical poet than Henry or Marvel, but except three, this three, you have to know some other writers. For example, George Herbert, George Herbert, uh, Abraham Cole, then uh, then Richard Crosshaw, okay, Richard Crosshaw, then John Cleveland, John what? John Cleveland. Okay, these are the writers that you must must remember. Okay, so the correct answer is the third one where we uh, can see John Donne, Henry Vaughan, and Andrew Marvel. Okay, moving on to the next question. 
which book of paradise laws incorporates the speech rhythms of adam and eve's marital quarrel so the particular the question is specifically asking about a book name where adam and eve's marital quarrel is happening or, or incorporates okay so that is the question and we have already discussed a lot of uh, books of paradise law so you must remember um humne earlier lectures mein jo hai previous lectures mein humne ye sare questions cover kiye hain but in different ways so you need to know that the options are book 4 whether it is book 4 book 6 7 or 9 so the correct answer is 9 okay where paradise law incorporates the speech rhythms of adam and eve's marital quarrel and the correct answer is book 9 the fourth one okay now moving on arrange the following in the chronological order of publication so i have already so many times told you that uh, it's very important for you to remember the publishing year of the major works okay so you cannot skip that arrange the following in the chronological order of publication so here advancement of learning or the origin of species on heroes and hero worship or the lives of the poets you have to arrange them now let me tell you advancement of learning was written by francis bacon and the publishing year is 1605 okay the origin of species was written by charles darwin okay charles darwin and it was published in 1859 no the publishing year i'll tell you the publishing year and arrange them okay on heroes and hero worship was written by thomas carlyle and it was published in 1841 okay and the last one lives of the poets lives of the poets of course i must i already told you about this it was written by samuel johnson and it is published in 1779 okay these are the publishing and now arrange them the first one will come at the beginning then d then hamara will come c and then b of course right 1605 then 1779 then 1841 and 1859 right so this is our correct answer moving on to which mythological character is fosters compared in the prologue of dr fosters to which mythological character is fosters compared in the prologue of dr fosters so the options are fosters theseus icarus or achilles so main bata deti hu dekhiye correct answer jo hai icarus hai because icarus ki jo story thi wo is tarah se thi ki unko bahut samjhaya jata hai ki nahi aap udhar na jaye udhar na jaye fir bhi he didn't listen to his father aur uske baad wo jo hai apni maut se mil jata hai so somewhere it is very related to dr fosters kyunki unhe bhi bahut bahar bad angels aur jo good angels aati hain samjhate hain aur bhi bahut sare unko mauke milte hain jahan pe unhe change hone ke chances milte hain but he never took that chance theek hai to prologue mein jo hai ek mythological character se inhe compare kiya gaya hai that is icarus do remember that okay moving on which two of the following poems are by robert browning so isse pehle ki aap robert browning ke works pehchane it's very important for you to identify the works that is not written by robert browning automatically you will get the robert browning's work right see here locksley hall who wrote locksley hall locksley hall is a uh, work by alfred tennyson okay alfred tennyson then the pied piper of hamley who wrote this this is a work by robert browning so you got the first option b right b you need to count that then the lady of shalott who wrote lady of shalott lady of shalott of course ro- uh, written by alfred tennyson and two in the camping now of course it will be uh, with it will go with robert browning okay so you got the answer b and d will be the correct answer right v and d will be the correct answer moving on which of the following are the major themes in william congreve's the way of the world if you have not written uh, read this particular work do read it do identify the publishing year do identify the whole, whole story do identify the characters themes everything each and everything about this 
particular work okay written by william congreve but the question is asking about the major theme uh, of this particular work the way of the world so the major theme you need to identify the options are jealousy and revenge whether love and intrigue or intrigue and death or for love and loyalty basically intrigue matlab kya uh, इंट्रीक बेसिकली उसका मतलब होता है कि किसी भी इंसान को बहुत ज़्यादा इंटरेस्टिंग बनाना जिसके बारे में हम और ज़्यादा जानने के लिए इच्छा प्रकट करें मतलब बहुत ज़्यादा इंटरेस्ट आए वी वॉन्ट टू नो अबाउट हिम दैट इज़ इंट्रीक ओके सो द थीम ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर वर्क इज लाव एंड इंट्रीक इट इज़ ऑल बेस्ड ऑन दैट सो द सेकेंड वन इज़ द करेक्ट आंसर मूविंग ऑन Which one of the following essays hold that as a method realism is a complete failure? Which one of the following essays hold that as a method realism is a complete failure? You, here you do not uh, need to do anything. You just need to remember that because uh, if you make the notes, maybe somewhere you'll miss that. But uh, that is why we practice PYQs, right? So the options are Virginia Woolf's "The Mark on the Wall." or Oscar Wilde the decay of lying or D.H. Lawrence why the novel matters novel matters or the fourth one Mary McCarthy my confession which is the correct one so the correct answer is the second one Oscar Wilde the decay of lying which one the Oscar Wilde Oscar Wilde decay the decay of lying and it was basically it has another Title or another title it has a long title that is the decay of lying colon and observation. This is the full title. And this is an essay collection. It's not an essay. It's not a uh, something else. It comes not under some other genres. It comes under essay collections. And it was published in eighteen hundred ninety one. Okay, and. Um, It presents the essay in a Socratic dialogue. But Socratic dialogue किसके बीच होता है Vivian, Vivian and Cyril के बीच में. Okay, so these are the uh, basically names of the characters that actually indulge into Socratic dialogue. And ये और एक बात बहुत important है that Vivian and Cyril जो name है वो Oscar Wilde के खुद के बेटे के नाम पे पड़ा है, ठीक है? उन्होंने वहीं से उठाया. Maybe he inspired he was inspired by that now moving on which one of the following sherlock holmes stories refers to a significant event in event in english history which one of the following sherlock holmes stories refers to a significant event in english event in english history so here aapko ye pata chal gaya ki sherlock holmes ke jitne bhi stories the these are the stories right ab aapko ye bas pata karna hai you have to find out the uh, very story that is a significant um uh, in terms of history english history okay so the correct answer before answering the question let me tell you about the options the first option is wait a minute mushgrove ritual second the speckled band third solitary cyclist or the fourth one the red headed league so the correct answer is the mushgrove ritual and it has another title the adventure of the mushroom ritual okay the adventure of the mushroom ritual right now it's a short story and it was of course written by arthur canan dial uh, doyle and it was published in 1893 see ya and matlab jitne bhi मतलब जितने भी जो शर्लोक होम्स की स्टोरीज है ना मेजोरिटी जो है उनके नरेटर जो हैं डॉक्टर रहे हैं बट इस पर्टिकुलर वर्क में डॉक्टर नहीं है एंड शर्लोक होम्स ही स्टोरी सुना रहे होते हैं शर्लोक होम्स ही नरेटर हैं तो ये अनदर इम्पोर्टेंट थिंग है दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर या ओके सो द करेक्ट आंसर इज द मुश्रॉफ रिचुअल और द एडवेंचर्स ऑफ द मुश्रॉफ रिचुअल द फर्स्ट वन मूविंग ऑन Who is the author of A Fragment 1819 one of the earliest vampire stories in English A Fragment aapko pata chal gaya bhai writer abhi aap jaan jaoge lekin isse pehle aapko pata chal gaya ki 1819 ki work hai ye aur sabse uh, kuch bahut sare jitne bhi 
कुछ जितने भी मतलब वेम्पायर स्टोरीज हैं और लेस वेम्पायर स्टोरीज हैं उनमें से एक ये भी है ये आपको पता चल गया क्वेश्चन से न ऑप्शन आप पी वी शैले लॉर्ड बाइरल ब्रांड स्टॉकर और मैरी शैले यू हैव टू आंसर दैट सो सी अ फ्रेगमेंट इज अ वर्क ऑफ लॉर्ड बाइडन ठीक है इट वॉज पब्लिश इन एटीन नाइनटीन ऑफकोर्स आई टोल्ड यू बिकॉज ऑफ द क्वेश्चन एंड इट इज अ अनफिनिश्ड वर्क अनफिनिश्ड वर्क है ये ये आपको ध्यान रखना है एंड अ लॉर्ड ऑफ थिंग्स आर यू नीड टू रिमेंबर अनफिनिश्ड है देन वेम्पायर हॉरर स्टोरीज है ओके वट इट इज वेम्पायर हॉर स्टोरीज देन इट हैज अन अदर टाइटल्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल अ फ्रेगमेंट को हम द बरियल द बरियल कॉल इन अ फ्रेगमेंट भी बोल रहे हैं द बरियल कॉल इन अ फ्रेगमेंट ओके आई एम सो सॉरी फॉर दिस वन ओके अ बरियल कॉल इन अ फ्रेगमेंट और अ फ्रेगमेंट के नाम से भी हम जानते हैं एंड आई ऑलरेडी टोल यू दैट इट इज कंसिडर वन ऑफ द फर्स्ट इन इंग्लिश टू फीचर अ वेम्पायर थीम ओके सो द लॉर्ड बायरन इज द करेक्ट आंसर राइट मूविंग ऑन The Duchess of Malfi is based on. The Duchess of Malfi is based on. So who wrote Duchess of Malfi? First thing, John Webster. Who wrote it? John Webster wrote this one, and um, it was published. Not published because it's a play. So it was first performed in sixteen hundred fourteen. Okay, and the question is asking about the source. Okay. The Duchess of Malfi is based on. So it was based on an Italian novella. In what? In Italian novella. Okay. So the correct answer is the second one. Moving on. Poetry, according to Sir Philip Sidney, is of three kinds. They are. The question is asking about Sir Philip Sidney. आप जब literary criticism करोगे, तो you'll get to know Sir Philip Sidney ने बहुत बातें कही हैं poetry के बारे में, जहाँ पे उन्होंने three kinds of poetry को identify किया है, और वहाँ से आपको easily बहुत पता चल जाएगा कि कौन से कौन से वो हैं. But वहाँ बस आपको करना क्या है कि याद करनी है. So the options are religious, dramatic, or romantic. Second, classical, romantic, or neoclassical. Okay? Then philosophical. Imaginative or narrative. Fourth one, religious, philosophical, or imaginative. So let me tell you, the fourth one is the correct answer. He identified poetry in three kinds. That's the R. Ah, uh, those are religious, philosophical, and imaginative. The fourth one. Okay, the correct answer. Moving on. Which two of the following events are described in Samuel Pepys's diary? So the question is asking about Samuel Pepys' diary, and I have already discussed uh, this in uh, previous lectures. जब हम British literature cover कर रहे थे, तभी मैंने cover कराया है, और वहाँ पे मैंने mention किया है कि कौन-कौन से major event को Samuel Pepys की diary जो है cover करती है. तो ये बहुत easy है to answer, but still, uh, Essex Rebellion को वो consider नहीं करती, the War of Spanish Succession को नहीं करती, but it talks about plague or in London and the Great Fire of London. Okay, these two events are included in that particular diary. So you need to remember A and B is the correct answer. Okay, yeah. Moving on, arrange the following authors in the chronological order of their birth. So I guess you don't have to arrange them in a chronological order according to of their birth because ये बहुत important बात है that हम हर writer के birth और death year नहीं याद रख सकते but आपको इतना तो पता ही कौन सा writer किस age में belong कर रहा है Geoffrey Chaucer and William Langley सबसे earliest हो गए तो of course ये दोनों में से कोई भी सबसे पहले आएगा है ना तो options में आपको इस तरह से देखनी है then Oscar Wilde of course सबसे last में आएंगे क्योंकि ये 1859th century के time के writer हैं ठीक है मतलब वो भी late 19th century okay तो अंत में आएंगे of course तो A हो गया आपका B और C पहले आएगा then आपको कौन आएंगे Alexander Pope उसके बाद आएंगे Oscar Wilde के पहले क्योंकि 1688 to 1744 जो है इनका पूरी लाइफ ड्यूरेशन है 
देन कौन आएंगे जॉन ड्राइडन जिनकी लाइफ ड्यूरेशन है सिक्सटीन हंड्रेड थर्टी वन सिक्सटीन हंड्रेड थर्टी वन टू सेवनटीन हंड्रेड राइट तो आपके कौन कौन से हो गए ई e हो गए देन आपके डी हो गए अब कौन सा से पहले आएंगे पहले आएंगे सी उल्टे साइड से सी क्योंकि जॉफरे चौसर जो है फोर्टीन हंड्रेड में इनकी डेथ हुई है बर्थ का टाइम कंफर्म नहीं है सर विल नॉट कंसिडर दैट देन विलियम लैंगलन जो है इनके पहले मतलब थर्टीन एटी सिक्स में इनकी मृत्यु हुई है थर्टीन एटी सिक्स ठीक है एंड ही वॉज बॉर्न इन थर्टीन थर्टी टू ओके तो बी बी सी डी ई ए इज द करेक्ट आंसर ओके दिस वे टिल गो क्रोनोलॉजिकली मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन मैच लिस्ट वन टू लिस्ट टू राइट मैच लिस्ट वन टू लिस्ट टू सो दो ऑप्शन आर लाइक दिज आर द लाइन्स एंड दिज आर द वर्क यू हैव टू मैच दैन सो लेट मी टेल यू मॉन्यूमेंट्स ऑफ अन एजिंग इंटेलेक्ट इज अ लाइन फ्रॉम मॉन्यूमेंट्स ऑफ अन एजिंग इंटेलेक्ट अन एजिंग एज के बारे में बात होती है सेलिंग टू बाई जेंटियम में सो दिस इज going to be with the third one okay then in the fall rag and bone shop of the heart in the fall rag and bone shop of the heart this is the line from the circus animus desertion fourth even if you don't remember uh, a line from a work so you need to remember अगर आपको दो या एक के भी पता हो तो इट विल बी वेरी इजी फॉर यू टू एलिमिनेट दी ऑप्शन एंड दैट विल हेल्प यू टू फाइंड द करेक्ट ऑप्शन वेरी इजीली ओके देन थर्ड वन सो मास्टर्ड बाय द ब्रूट ब्लड ऑफ द एयर सो मास्टर्ड बाय द ब्रूट ब्लड ऑफ द एयर ओके सो थर्ड का जो है um, कौन सा है थर्ड का तो थर्ड जो लाइन है वो किसकी है वो है लेडा एंड द स्वान की बिकॉज इट टॉक्स अबाउट अ काइंड ऑफ ब्रूटल बिहेवियर राइट इट टॉक्स अबाउट ब्लड ऑफ द एयर सो मास्टर बाय द ब्रूट ब्लड ऑफ द एयर सो दिस लाइन इज फ्रॉम लेडा एंड द स्वान एंड द लास्ट ऑफ कॉज एज वेरी हार्टेड एज दैट हॉलो मून वॉज फ्रॉम आदम्स इन आदम्स कॉज ओके टू एंड वन दिस इज द करेक्ट ऑर्डर ऑफ द क्वेश्चन so we have already got the idea that what is the correct answer now moving on to the next question which two rivers are mentioned by andrew marvel at the beginning of to his coy mistress so very famous work andrew marvel ke ek bahut important and famous work hai to his coy mistress wahan pe kuch rivers ko mention kiya gaya hai ab aapko batana hai kaun si river hai तो उससे पहले मैं आपको बता देती हूँ ये एक मेटाफिजिकल पोएम है मेटाफिजिकल पोएम इट्स अ मेटाफिजिकल पोएम एंड इट वाज पब्लिश पोस्टमसली एंड इन विच ईयर 1681 हंड्रेड एटी रिमेंबर दैट ओके एंड यहाँ पे कौन कौन से रिवर को मेंशन किया जाता है पहला तो द गंगा एंड द सेकंड वन इज हम्बोर डू रिमेंबर सो मेनी टाइम्स दे आर क्वेश्चन ऑन दिस ओके द गंगा एंड दर इज द गैंग्स और द हम्बोर Moving on, so the uh, correct answer is A and C, right? Now let me tell you. Okay, the lives of which of the following writers have been the subject matter of novels by Anthony Burgess? The lives of which of the following writers have been the subject matter of novels by Anthony Burgess? So Anthony Burgess pe bas. Uh, कुछ भी इम्पोर्टेंट नहीं है इतना बताने के लिए बट हाँ आपको याद रखना है कि कौन कौन से राइटर्स को उन्होंने मेंशन किया है उनके कौन से नॉवल में किस राइटर को मेंशन किया गया है यहाँ पे बेसिकली आपको मेंशन करना है टू राइटर्स दैट वाज द सब्जेक्ट मैटर ऑफ नॉवल्स बाय एंथनी बर्गस वेदर इट इज मिल्टन मार्लो शेले और कीट यू हैव टू फाइंड आउट सो टू ऑफ दैम क्रिस्टोफर मार्लो एंड जॉन कीट सो बी एंड डी is the correct answer b and d is the correct option and answer moving on in the life of cole which two of the following criticisms were made by samuel johnson against a group of writers he termed the metaphysical poets 
तो क्वेश्चन में आपको पूछा जा रहा है दैट इन इन द लाइफ ऑफ कॉले इब्राहम कॉले कॉस विच टू ऑफ द फॉलोइंग क्रिटिसिजम्स वर मेड बाय सेम्यूल जॉनसन अगेंस्ट अ ग्रुप ऑफ राइटर्स इट टर्म द मेटाफिजिकल पोइट्स द ऑप्शन आ सो द ऑप्शन आर द फर्स्ट वन द मेड एन इन अप्रोप्रिएट कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ विट एंड इमेजिनेशन बी इंस्टेड ऑफ राइटिंग पोइट्री दे ओनली राइट वर्सेस सी द नीडर कॉपीड नेचर नॉर लाइफ और दी दे ने ट्राई टू बी सिंगुलर इन देर थॉट्स सो ही एक्चुअली नेवर सेट दिस एंड ही नेवर सेट दिस सो दिस टू आर द करेक्ट आंसर ही एक्चुअली ही वॉज अगेंस्ट मेरा फिजिकल पोएट बिकॉज ऑफ देर वे ऑफ राइटिंग पोइट्री दे ओनली राइट वर्सेस ओके इंस्टेड ऑफ राइटिंग पोइट्री दे ओनली राइट वर्सेस एंड दे नीद कॉपी नेचर नॉर लाइफ सो दिस टू आर द करेक्ट आंसर सो बी एंड सी विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर ओके Moving on, which of this character's figure in Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godot? So I think it's very easy to identify because Waiting for Godot तो बहुत ज़्यादा easy हो जाता है और इनके characters किसको नहीं पता होंगे? फिर भी देखिए Murphy तो नहीं है, Bishanio is also not there, Pozo, Pozo of course है जो पूरे act में आपको बार बार आएगा. ठीक है वो है और एस्ट्रोगन ऑफ कोर्स इम्पोर्टेंट कैरेक्टर है व्लादिमिर और एस्ट्रोगन दो इम्पोर्टेंट तो कैरेक्टर्स ही हैं जो वेट कर रहे होते हैं गोडो का तो दिस टू आर द करेक्ट आंसर इट्स वेरी इजी क्वेश्चन ए एंड बी करेक्ट आंसर ओके मूविंग ऑन विच अमोंग द फॉलोइंग आर एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ कंसलर रोमन विच अमोंग द फॉलोइंग आर एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ कंसलर रोमन तो फर्स्ट यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड वट इज कंसलर रोमन ओके सो कंसलर रोमन बेसिकली इसका मतलब होता है आर्टिस्ट नॉवल ओके आर्टिस्ट नॉवल बेसिकली यहाँ पे जो है ना जनरेटिव जो होती है वो इस तरह की होती है कि आर्टिस्ट के ग्रोथ के बारे में पूरी तरह से ग्रोथ के बारे में टू मेच्योरिटी तक बताते हैं जैसे बिल्डिंग्स रोमन होता है वहाँ पे आप देखते हो कि किसी भी कैरेक्टर का जो है शुरुआत से अंत तक कितनी डेवलपमेंट होती है उन सारी चीज़ों के बारे में बात की जाती है बट कंसलर रोमन बेसिकली बात करता है आर्टिस्ट के डेवलपमेंट पे और उसके ग्रोथ टू मेच्योरिटी पे ठीक है और ये एक तरह का सब कैटेगरी भी है इसे क्लासीफाई किया जाता है सब कैटेगरी ऑफ बिल्डिंग्स रोमन एंड इट साउंड लाइक दैट एज वेल राइट सो द ऑप्शन आ द क्वेश्चन इज आस्क द एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ कंसलर रोमन So the uh, options are the portrait of a lady, then David Copperfield, then Tom Jones, and a portrait of the artist as a young man. A portrait of the artist of a of the artist as a young man. So the correct answer are C. It will not include the portrait of a lady and Tom Jones. So B and D will be our correct answer. B and D will be our correct answer. Right. Moving on. In which book of Paris Lost does Milton refer to Agra and Lahore of Great Mogul? Okay. In which book of Paris Lost does Milton refer to Agra and Lahore of Great Mogul? So uh, here, of course, you need to remember. इसके अलावा आपके पास कोई ऑप्शन नहीं है. Book three, or book four, or book seven, or book nine. So the correct answer is book nine. Book nine. Okay. Moving on. Match list one with list two. These are the works and these are the poets. You have to match them. So, uh, how will you match it? See anniversaries. Who wrote anniversaries? Abraham Cole, John Dunn, George Herbert, or Andrew Marvel? John Dunn wrote this work. Okay, John Dunn wrote this particular. Work anniversaries. Then the temple. Who wrote this? Temple was written by Herbert, George Herbert. Okay. Third, the rehearsal transposed. Who wrote this work? Andrew Marvel. Who wrote it? Andrew Andrew Marvel. And Pindari quotes. It's very famous and very uh, easy to identify. Of course, Abraham Cole. Who wrote it? Abraham Cole. Okay, so A will go with B. Uh, second one, sorry. Then 
the temple will go with the third one then the rehearsal transpose the third one the c will go with which one marvel of course the fourth and the last one will go with the first one okay do uh, focus on the elimination technique so that you can answer it very accurately question number 107 how does t s eliot sum up the peculiar quality of marvel's horatian ode how does t s eliot sum up the peculiar quality of marvel's horatian ode okay so the options are a contrast of ideas different in degree but the same in principle second option a tough reason uh, reasonableness beneath a slight lyric grace third heterogeneity of materials compelled into unity or telescoping of images and multiplier association which is the correct option <laughs> think about it a tough reason uh, reasonableness beneath a slight lyric grace the second one is the correct answer here you do not need to think much yahan pe bas aapko jo hai work pe focus karna hai jitne bhi important important writers hain unke works pe aapko focus karna hai and the major idea aapko dhyan rakhna hai so that you can answer this questions very easily okay moving on match the list 1 to list 2 so these are the works and these are the writers you have to match them so the first is a handful of dust who wrote it a handful of dust it's a work written by evelyn wog okay so this is uh, going to be with the second one okay then brickton rock who wrote brickton rock so it's a work by graham green so five Howard Sen, it's very easy. Howard Sen, who wrote he? Howard Sen, E. M. Foster. So the first one here, yeah. the plumb serpent. Who wrote the plumbed serpent? Here yeah, the the third one, D. H. Lawrence. Okay, and the last one of course will go with those barren leaves. So fourth one, yeah, this is Aldous Huxley. Okay, D. this is the correct spelling and we'll go with the fifth one e okay so handful of dust written by evelyn wog britton rock was written by graham green howard sand was written by e m foster the plant servant was written by d h lawrence and those barren leaves was written by aldous huxley okay moving on arrange the following poems by w b h in the chronological order of publication so these are the works written by w b h to remember these works okay first it will help you okay so the options are the wild swans at cool b the second coming among school children or adam's curse so let me tell you the publishing year so um the wild swans at cool was published in 1917 when 1917 the second coming was published in 1920 among school children uh, was published in 1926 and adams curse was published in very early 1903 so d a b and c this is the correct chronology right or this is going to be a correct answer moving on who wrote the essay my first acquaintance with poets i have discussed this work and i hope you all know that my first acquaintance with poets was written by whom william hazlitt you don't need to think much you just need to remember this one moving on match list 1 to list 2 Robert Browning, S. T. Coleridge, A. W. Pinero, Alfred Tennyson, William Wordsworth, and these are the works: Queen Mary, the Second Mrs. Stanquery, Remorse, uh, the Bodice, Strafford. So, so uh, let me tell you. C. A. You'll go with with what? Okay. So Queen Mary. Who wrote Queen Mary? Hmm? Who wrote this particular work? Alfred Tennyson. 
Alfreton is in what? Wrought Queen Mary, the first one, okay. Then, fifth, Stafford, who wrote Stafford? Robert Browning, fifth one. Then, who wrote the borders? Who wrote the borders? The borders was written by William Wordsworth. William Wordsworth. And then there are two options. The Queen Mrs. Tanquery. So the second one who wrote this, the second Mrs. Uh, Tanquery was written by A.W. Pinro. Okay. And remorse. Remorse is written by whom? S.T. Colleries. We have done this, right? Fifth, A will go with the fifth one. S.T. Colleries, the third. A.W. Pinro, the second. Alfred Tennyson will one. And William Wordsworth, fourth. I have not mentioned the options because uh, it will take the another slide because of that. So, do focus on the question. Have the previous year uh, uh, questions with you and do answer that, that okay? with the help of this video. Moving on. Which Shakespearean comedy is structured as a play within a play? Which Shakespearean comedy is structured as a play within a play? Okay. So, Hamlet may, Hamlet ko kaya sakte hain, play within a play because there was a play in the play. Thik hai? So, Hamlet to hai ni option mein, but the options are A Midsummer's Night's Dream, Lovers, uh, lo uh, Love, Lovers, Lost, then love labors lost hota hai. Third, the comedy of errors. The then the fourth one, the taming of the shoe. The taming of the shoe. There is a movie, Life of the I think, or uh, something related to that. There they play. They uh, perform a play, the taming of the shoe. वहाँ पे दो characters होते हैं. That is Kate. That stands for Catherine and Petruchio. Petruchio. Okay. So these two are the main characters. And there is another character who is a sister of Kate. Okay. So, and it has a framing device. Uh, begins with a framing device that is play within a play. So, the taming of the shrew is the correct answer. Okay. Where uh, it is structured. Play within a play was structured. Moving on. Besides being a playwright, who among the following has translated Homer? Okay, so बहुत सारे writers ने Homer को translate किया है, but इन सारे option में किसने किया है, you have to find out whether it is Ben Johnson or Thomas Decker or Thomas Haywood or George Chapman. Yes, it's very easy to guess. George Chapman is the correct answer. He translated Homer's work. Okay, moving on to the last work. Match list one and list two. Forget the options. Focus here. Hamlet, Macbeth, Julius Caesar, Othello. Or these are the years. So Hamlet was published in 1500. Wait a second. 1599 to 1600, 1601. Okay. So इससे similar कोई भी होता है year तो आपको उसको guess करना है. Macbeth जो है 1616 को publish हुआ है. So six, sixteen hundred six को. Julius Caesar here is 1599 and Othello 1603. So, you can see 1599 to 1600. So, we will choose the closest because 1599 specifically is given here and in options. And here you can see the option in options. Right? So, what do you have to do? 1599 will go with this. Julius Caesar. Okay? And the closest one, 1599. So, Hamlet, our 1600, we will take 1603 is closest, 1604. Because 1606 is closest, 1605. So, we will go with 1605. And 1604, which one will go with Othello. So, this is the correct chronology. You have to do this. Because specifically, they don't give options. एकदम जैसे पॉइंट वाइज जो है एकदम करेक्ट ईयर नहीं देंगे आपको क्लोजेस्ट चुनना होगा अगर उन्होंने नहीं दिया है तो करेक्ट दे दिया है तो डेट इज़ ओके डेट इज़ ग्रेट फॉर यू बट अगर उन्होंने नहीं दिया है तो आपको क्लोजेस्ट चुनना है ठीक है सो 1600 वी हैव चोज वी चोज 
and uh, for 6599 of course we chose this 1599 to 1600 we chose 1600 and 1606 ke jagah pe instead of 1606 we chose 1605 okay so we have completed this lecture we'll meet in the next lecture thank you so much and keep on revising and if you have any suggestion do remind me on the comment section and feel free to talk about the session okay thank you